Hello, uh, this is Mr. Taylor with Young Engineers and today uh, we are going to be doing a recap of um, Archimedes War Machines under our Ancient Engineering Unit. <clears throat> um, three major weapons we're going to look at is the claw, which is made of a simple machine, a death ray uh, used for solar energy, and a steam cannon, uh, Newton's third law of relationship between temperature and pressure. All right. Um, now, um, one of the major motivation factors for war is the threat of war is responsible for huge advances in engineering and mathematics. Uh, a modern past hundred years example would be the nuclear bomb, helped lead to a lot of nuclear um, testing and engineering and science that has advanced us into a nuclear power age, um, but derived from World War II. Uh, Archimedes, the great inventor, he was a very um, mastermind of warfare, one of the greatest mathematical minds of his day. Here is a video. Hi, welcome to McDonald's. How um, clip that is about seven minutes long that will show you, and you can see there's the link right there, uh, about Archimedes. Okay. I would pause and watch that. Now, uh, Archimedes' claw. Uh, was designed to lift ships out of the water uh, as a defensive tool. And here is a vimo.com clip that you can watch. It's about two minutes. Here is the link here. All right. Now, um, and it goes into how it actually works. And the device used a combination of a special belt lever and pulley in order to lift a ship, and you can see that right there. Um, now, uh, by means of special joint, which allowed the beam of the crane to be swiveled horizontally as well as vertically, so it would move up and down left and right. The claws are used to grapple an enemy ship approaching um, the, the battlement, uh, these protective walls. Now, uh, a team of oxen pull the lever uh, to help lift the load, uh, which greatly magnified the pulley system on the crane, while the natural buoyancy of the ship in the water assists the lifting work. Okay? This buoyancy is a force that pushes upward in the water. Uh, when the ship has been lifted as far as it can go, the tension on the pulley built large quantity, ma a high magnitude of tension. A almost trigger release would let the pulley go and it would slam the boat down, um, which would create a um, create a boat that pushes down in the water below the water line and would take on water. Okay. Now, as you can see, the lever on this side, uh, these are some possible layouts. Uh, it's typically longer than the other side, creating a uh, mechanical advantage. Uh, and you can make things like this out of Legos as well to demonstrate it. Now, uh, the fulcrums and pulleys would control large wooden hooks and pull entire warships up from the water, causing ships to tip and capsize. Pulley is a simple machine. It consists of grooved rim wheel and used with a rope or chain. How much easier a pulley makes lifting a load is described with a theoretical mechanical advantage. Now, theoretical mechanical advantage is the ratio of force loaded by the machine to the force put into into it. Uh, this is different from actual mechanical advantage, which takes into other forces such as like friction, uh, um, gravity, etc. Now, um, some different types of pulleys. A fixed pulley has a theoretical mechanical advantage of one, meaning how much work you put into it is how much is going to come out of it. So if I pull, am able to pull 100 pounds, it's going to pull 100 pounds. This means that however much force you apply is the amount of force delivered in the pulley. Now, a movable pulley has one end of the rope attached to support. It has a uh, theoretical advantage of two. This means whatever force you exert, the pulley doubles it, okay? Now, block and tackle, uh, this is also a compound pulley. A block and tackle is a combination of fixed and movable pulleys uh, with a single rope or chain passing through it. Its mechanical advantage is equal to the number of lengths of rope that support the movable pulleys. A lot of times you will see these types of pulleys on cranes, on sailing vessels, etc. Here is an example of looking at how these are similar but different. Um, 
Now, with the block and tackle in Fulcrum, the difference with the block and tackle is making Archimedes' claw. It's going to increase its mechanical advantage. All right. Now, Archimedes' death ray. Now, there's been a lot of debate about this um, histor historically and scientifically. Uh, could Archimedes have truly built a sun reflecting super weapon? Uh, and the answer is yes. Uh, but it's not from the traditional viewpoint of the previous picture where they thought it was one mirror. Um, it it's actually takes multiple mirrors to focus this in on. Um, and in the video, they go over this where they have a scaled model where it was 48 small mirrors, but it actually sent a, wooden, a small wooden um, model boat on fire in less than like a minute. Okay. Now, and part of this is parabolic reflection. You need a mirror with a parabolic shape that has no, that isn't spherical, okay? Because this will focus all on one local point, where a spherical shape mirror um, focuses on multiple areas. Now, um, to those of you, um, Solar cookers, it's the same concept. It's focusing all that energy from the sun, its rays, into one central location. And to anyone that's ever played with a magnifying glass where you try to get the sunlight just right, you can set stuff on fire. All right? And what we've used is the same concept that Archimedes has is to harness this energy. Um, we've done this with linear concentration systems for uh, solar power. Okay, and the thing that's very impressive is that these mirrors now will actually rotate. They got uh, solar mirror, solar panels that will actually uh, use like a light sensor that will follow the sun and try to maximize the concentration all day. Uh, dish energy systems very similar, but as you can see, they look like dishes. Power conversion units. Uh, then power towers, I think these are really cool because it's a, a solar power tower surrounded by mirrors. All these mirrors are reflected onto this receiver point. Okay? Which leads us to Archimedes' steam cannon, which is sending out projectiles through steam. And we've started heavily using steam power in the 1800s with locomotives and uh, boats. But... Uh, the thing that's great about steam power is this built-up pressure. Um, now, how this would work, and it's due to temperature. Because an increase in temperature means an increase in pressure. Okay? And what you have is a chamber with a uh, projectile in it, this barrel. Now, you have a reservoir for water with some valves. And as the, an open flame heats up, it's going to start boiling the water. Water turns into a vapor, and this gas expands, which increases the pressure. When you let that pressure go, it shoots out the projectile. But the other side of this is dangerous, because if you build up too much pressure, it's like blowing up a balloon too much, it pops. Now, because this relates to uh, the states of matter, Everything has a melting, boiling point. The thing is, we come in contact with most objects um, on our day-to-day -day basis are e in a certain uh, state of matter at room temperature. Now, if you add heat or uh, decrease that temperature or increase that temperature, you can move in the different states of matter. In water, for example, which is a very common one that people use, if you Drop the temperature, you turn liquid water at room temperature into a solid. If you keep increasing that back up, you'll go back to liquid and then eventually to a gas. And we've been using this with a variety of metal uh, materials um, for a uh, man who's been doing this for a very long time. Now, um, this is related to... Uh, gay lussacs law. The temperature of a container is increased, the pressure increases, okay? So if um, I have an understanding of this, this relates to how I can make a pressure cannon. 
Basically, as the gas speeds up, it expands, the particles colliding over a wider area. Since the container is capped, pressure inside the container increases. So you cap that, um, and then if you release it, it's going to shoot out because it wants to get out of that area from high to low. Now, this is a video clip that I will play for you. about the pressure cannon. Now, this pressure cannon, this pressure cannon here um, was designed off of Archimedes' concept. Now, it needs to get up to 150 PSI pressure, but it ends up shooting 200 yards. I muted the video so that there wouldn't be a lag on the wording, but I will post the video for you. Now, it uses an open flame to build the pressure. Now, this is actually really dangerous because think of a balloon, too much pressure, it will pop. To fire this cannon, it needs to get up to 150 PSI. He puts a projectile and when he releases that valve, not using much water, this thing shoots over 200 feet. When he shoots at 200 feet, that's equivalent to help put it in perspective, if you think of a football field, that's almost 67 yards. All right. Now, um, we've been using steam engines to help create movement or do work. It's because this high pressure steam comes in one valve and pushes up a piston, but then it's released. When it's released and it's exhaust steam, it, the piston drops back down, then it builds up pressure again. So this constant build up and dropping. Um, electrical generators, um, boil water, it spins a turbine, but the same concept that Archimedes was using, we've converted it for energy purposes. Um, thank you, and have a great day. Bye-bye.